divide Hurricane Ian victims by race. Was she trying to say she would prefer to help the one she chooses first? The VP with some controversial comments about who should be first in line for relief just days after historic Hurricane Ian hit. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. The storm, as you know, was just shy of a Category 5. It tore apart southwest Florida, brought a 500-year flood all the way across the state to cities like Orlando last week. At least 80 people so far confirmed dead. Damage estimated to be in the billions of dollars, and with so many people in shock and heartbroken. Here's a word from the second-in-command in the White House. It is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by issues that are not of their own making. So we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity, understanding that we, we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity. The backlash was immediate. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's campaign tweeted, this is false. The VP's rhetoric is causing undue panic and must be clarified. FEMA, individual assistance, is already available to all Floridians impacted by Hurricane Ian, regardless of race or background. South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace with this. It's really literally the, literally the definition of discrimination. Hurricanes don't see color. Hurricanes don't see political affiliation. Hurricanes don't see gender. All they see is destruction along the coast where they hit. And it is incredibly racist. Can you imagine someone saying the exact opposite, that only whites and men should get hurricane resources first? I mean, that is, that's crazy town. And the fact that the vice president of the United States is making those kinds of comments shows a lack of leadership. Peter Ducey is live for us outside the White House, wondering if any comment has come with regard to this. Peter. No, Harrison. The vice president had a chance to clarify what she meant in this comment that sounds like race-based relief, uh, race relief from the hurricane, but she didn't. Vice President, can you clarify what you meant about equity for hurricane relief? Well, now Republicans in the Florida delegation are wishing that she would set this politically charged rhetoric aside. Listen, I just, I couldn't disagree more with the vice president. Now is not the time to be talking about who gets what based upon where you started. It's about helping people, making sure they get the resources they need as quickly to them as quickly as possible, helping them recover as quickly as possible. That's what matters. That other stuff can wait for another day. President Biden has been striking a different tone, tweeting the following. This is not just a crisis in Florida or in South Carolina or in Puerto Rico. It is a United States crisis. We'll do everything we can to get these communities back on their feet. And there's nothing about equity coming from the FEMA director either. Less impact. We're going to support all communities. I committed that to the governor. I commit to you right here that all Floridians are going to be able to get the help that is available to them through our program. So she is in charge of the relief, and she's talking about all Floridians. That is different than what we're hearing from uh, the vice president in that comment. Harris. Peter Ducey, thank you very much. We'll get into it now with Will Kane, co host and Fox and Friends Weekend. Uh, first of all, your top line response when you first heard this from the Vice President of the United States. Simultaneously um, shocking, Disgusting. but unsurprising. You can't be surprised that this type of language was coming from the White House, from the second most powerful person in the United States, because this type of language, Harris, has been employed throughout governmental policy for quite some time. You know, I heard uh, Nancy Mace in the clip you just played describe this as crazy town. It's not crazy town. It's immoral. What I mean by that is it is not simply sloppy. It is not simply uncalculated. It is a predictable guidance, a principle to which the Democratic Party has now subscribed that you should divide people according to their race. They do it with government contracts. They do it with educational opportunities. I can go down, and by the way, this word equity, and she, I appreciate 
the vice president distinguishing it from equality. Equality, the idea that we all aspire to a society where we're judged by our merit and our individual. No, no, she sets that aside and says we have to strive for equity, which means we start to filter each other through the prism of race. I can go down the street, Harris. I can go to my children's school, and they've incorporated that concept into their guiding principles. And it is, without a doubt, immoral. It is racist. Mm -hmm. And the president and the vice president of the United States, I guess now, that makes it unsurprising, I guess now what makes it shocking is they're willing to apply it to the most dire of circumstances, mm -hmm. a natural disaster. But make no mistake, this is predictable, and this is one of their guiding principles, to be racist. I, I want to get into it a little bit on this point, because you and I talk brass tacks all the time, so I'm just going to be really transparent here. Her husband is white, and so is mine. She's biracial, I'm black. If our white husbands lost one of us, they would cry as hard oh my God. as if a black husband lost his black wife. It's just that basic. So divide and conquer along the lines of politics is what this feels like. Because as human beings, it's very hurtful. I mean, that's that word you used at the end. Human beings. Oh Why is God. there such difficulty in seeing one another as human beings? Who says it's difficult? You just said it was not you, sloppy. It's, it's deliberate. And again, a natural disaster, I guess, highlights it for many. It's morally abhorrent to say we need to divide each other by race. And then also, by the way, for the purpose of employing a Marxist ideology, which she again lays out, you don't need me to somehow, you know, filter this into something that it's not. She lays it out. She says the goal of equity is to arrive at equal outcomes. Equality is doing our best to achieve equal opportunity. She wants to use race, racism, segregationist policies to ensure we arrive at equal outcomes. Thus is equity. And thus, just to tie it into your final observation there, Harris, thus is the denial of us as individuals and ultimately exactly. as human beings. Exactly. We all have our own path. And by the way, so did Hurricane Ian. So if he takes one of us away from someone who loves us, the hurricane didn't pick me because I was black or pick her potentially because she was biracial. You really think and the hurricane didn't know that, that? that someone white might mourn us or someone black might mourn us. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. And those victims left behind don't deserve something based on the color of their skin or the lack thereof. Your last quick thought on this will move. My, my last quick thought is just, again, understand. It's calculated and it's purposeful and therefore it's immoral. All right, we'll move. The Biden administration getting bombarded with hundreds of thousands of comments from parents since President Biden proposed changes to Title IX. A big part of that law aims to protect women and girls in sports. The president this summer said he wants to strengthen the rights of transgender students and athletes who use Title IX. The Department of Education now has to review every single response. A member of a girls volleyball team at a Vermont high school says the team has been banned from using girls locker rooms. It comes after they objected to changing clothes in the presence of a transgender student. Caitlin Jenner. Wait in today. The left has hijacked and politicized yet another minority group in our wonderful country. And all they're doing is driving this apart. Now, does this trans girl have the right under Vermont law um, to be on the team and to use the, the locker room? Yes, she does. Do these girls have the right to comment? Absolutely they do. Honestly, everything is out of whack right now. And these things have to stop. One thing Caitlin has told me uh, when we've had her here in focus is that we've got to come up with a way to do some sort of separate but equal. Like oh you, my God. you've got.